really kind of another one of those that's baseball kind of games really close to being able to pull out a win but some things didn't go your way at what point does it become like uh, the mistakes that your team has made that's costing you these games or is it another that's baseball kind of moment to sum up this afternoon um, no th this is a little deeper I think um, you know when, when you we don't play bad um, but we don't play good enough to win and it, it's uh, that that song and dance gets old real fast um, so for me, that's that's one of those things that, you know, I, I can't sit up here and preach. I can't, uh, you know, will it into these guys. It's just it's a killer instinct you got to have um, to to figure out ways to win games. Um, you can't play just good enough to lose and almost win. That that gets old and tiring. Um, that's almost worse than just getting blown out because you're right there. Um, you have have the chance to win games, you have a chance to, you know, one big two out hit or one big at bat here or one big pitch there and, and that, that game is different, but you know, it's not like a broken record. We can't say that every day. At some point in time, someone's got to step up and get it done and, um, you know, doing the best we can to put these guys in the right situations. But at some point in time, someone's got to step up. And uh, I think that's the message to these guys right now is, is they're playing hard. I have no, uh, no problem with the effort level, no problem with the care meter. Um, you know, these guys are, are, like I said, we're close, but people around here don't want to hear close. You know, they want to they be able to get it done, and so do we, so the coaching staff, and I believe the players do too. Um, but at the end of the day, we gotta, we got to figure out ways to, to do that. Still With rough. a younger team like this, when you, when you talk about that, like you said, I mean, we're obviously a team that was, you know, one pitch away from World Series last year. When you see, even within a series, growth like that, and I know, like you're saying, it's more about silver linings or moral victories, but... How close do you feel that that growth is and that step is? Well, uh, I think once you start accepting silver linings and moral victories, that becomes a standard. And right now, I can't. We we can't accept that. Um, yes, we try to take the positives out of things, but at the end of the day, it's all about W's. And and right now, we're not getting enough of them. Um, that falls upon my shoulders. I got to figure out ways to get these guys to play a little bit better and make the play when they need to and, and get the big hit when they need to. So. Um, can't do it for them, of course, but but we got to try to keep coaching and breathing it into them at the, the confidence level, and you know figure out ways to get it done. But on the same token, we can't we can't be accepting close defeats as, as acceptable around here. It's just not. You got really three very strong innings out of Tyler today uh, to start the game, and then you sort of straight off of that path in the fourth. Uh, what? What, what is the sort of perspective on his, you know, sort of recovery back to full health, returning from the kind of injury he had, and where he's at in that process uh, at, at this point, and and also to, to that, how patient do you have to be for him to be ready for, you know, to stay in the Sunday role uh, moving forward? Um, well, we're going to evaluate the whole entire, you know, whole entire team really, but. You know, in, in reference to Tyler, you know, he, he uh, threw the ball better today, um, walked, walked one guy, um, but, you know, that was in the fourth inning. We had a walk and a hit, and then, uh, you know, uh, the Muni home run, you know, there to, to left field where he made a pretty good pitch on and got the guy out front. I, I think the, the kid thought he was going to be out, and he looked up, and it's a grand slam. Um, you know, got up in the jet stream, and, and it's, not, it's not the home run that killed us. It's the walk and the hit batter prior to the home run. That, that really leaves a scar, um, and you know, at the end of the day, we had our we had our wind dated home runs too today, a couple of them. But um, you know, the, that's that's what stings is the walk and hit batter that we got to eliminate those type of things. Still relatively early on in the season, but you told us last week how the team is still far away from playing its best baseball. How closer do you think they got to getting there this week, even with the uh, lack of guys stepping up in the big moments? Um, you know, there, there's good individual performances throughout the game, but the team performance is what I'm concerned about. And I, I don't know how to, I don't know how to put that into words really, other than the fact that you know, some guys are, are doing doing some great things, uh, but we're not putting it all together as a team. Uh, we're not putting together one at bat to the next to the next to the next. We're, we're hitting home runs. But with nobody on base, you know, we're, we're not putting together the big innings. Uh, you know, some guys are coming out of the bullpen and throwing the ball great. Other guys, man, you know, two hits, two walks, and 
like, man, you can't, you can't survive like that. You know, we got a pound of strike zone, you know, but other guys, you know, Ryan Sheep, I'm throwing the ball great. Um, got us out of a big time jam there that in the, I mean, was that the sixth, I think. Um, and then went on to throw three stellar innings after that. Like, okay, so that's, that's the great performance. The not so great was coming in in a bases loaded jam with nobody out that we self-inflicted wounds. So um, just kind of putting it all together is, is what we got to do, obviously. But, um, you know, we'll keep grinding. We'll continue to stay positive with these guys. But at the same token, we got we to figure out ways to come out on top. Bases loaded jam caused by Cornelius coming out of the bullpen. What did you see from him that uh, gave him some trouble on the mound? Strikes, you know. Well, um, I've seen the ball come out a lot better from from, from Maddie's you know hand before, and it just it wasn't coming out very good. And and combine that with not hitting your spots, and it, you know couldn't couldn't get cheap form fast enough really. So um, you know he's uh, he's got to be better than that, and he knows that. Coach, it feels like the bullpen has kind of an up and down performance every day. There's someone that's performing well one day and comes in the next and is struggling maybe. How hard is it to manage kind of those fifth or ninth innings when it's tough to know who's going to be consistent exactly? Well, I'm getting grayer every day. <laughs> so um, trying to find the right mix and, and who to, again, you know, there's there's days where we're doing really well and, and putting guys in, in the situations that, that they were successful the previous outing in that situation and then the next time you know whether they, they are or aren't it, it's trying to find the pulse of when they're going to be on and when they're not and if they're not trying to get them out of there as quickly as they can and get the next guy in that can be successful in those situations but that's the challenge you know when you're dealing with um you know these kids are in college right and and they're not they're not at the professional ranks yet um but uh they're not going to be perfect and you have to Again, I guess that's what I'm talking about is even though you're not perfect, you still got to have the, the guts and the desire to still compete and get after and be find a way to be successful without your best stuff. When you were first hired here, you, you wanted your goal, your aim was to get the culture back on track, to, to renew what, what you had as a, a player here. Where is that? Um, where would you sort of evaluate that to be at this point, uh, isolated from you know, some, some of maybe the on-field results right now? You know, I think uh, it's, a, it's a fair question um, to be able to, to quantify that and, and say we're at 60% or 90% of the way there. I mean, I, I don't know. Um, I, I, I feel a, a good vibe in the clubhouse. I think we got, you know, good character kids in there and not to say there hasn't been character kids here in the past, but you know, I, I think, uh, you know, we're still missing a little bit of that, I guess, uh, blood and guts winner mentality. I think we're, we're getting close. Uh, we have, we have again, great kids in there that are, that really do truly care about this program and, and are getting there. Um, we just, again, finding that last piece of do whatever it takes to win. And we got to figure out a way to get it done. Um, you know, we're, again, very close, but we're not there yet. It feels like the, the offense kind of took a step back from the last time you guys were here at home. Uh, was that maybe at that quality? What did you see from what kind of changed? Um, you know, I think uh, missing good pitches uh, to hit. I think uh, just again, I haven't watched the, today's game, but um, just a little bit late. I think guys are they're getting ready a tick late and, and not getting the contact point where it needs to be. Um, squaring balls up, uh, hitting line drives, but you know a lot a lot of times early in the count to the opposite field instead of getting the head out a little bit more um, and doing damage with that intent. Um, just missing pitches again. I kind of go back to that the mindset of you know if you got good pitches to hit. Um, if you're if you're locked in with that sense of urgency, you don't miss those pitches. Um, you know, we faced some very good arms early on, and we didn't miss a lot of pitches early on. Um, so this is just in my mind, just a little bit more focus, a little bit more mindset of being ready to go, and, and that not just missing it. I'm you know following through with uh, you know with with that killer instinct. Hopefully that we, we can get at some point. With them being the reigning Pac-12 champions, it's just another tough team that you've played in this gauntlet to start the season with a kind of 
getting not necessarily getting easier, but like the notoriety of opponents decreasing after Arizona next week. How do you feel like the level of competition your team has faced in this first month is going to get them ready for the stretch run? Well, I mean, I've said it several times. I think, you know, we've been, we're, we're battle tested, clearly. I mean, we've been every game's, you know, uh, 27 out dog fight where you can't let your guard down for one minute, right? It, it's, it's, uh, that's just how we are. And does that become mentally draining? Uh, it, a little bit for me, I know that much because it's like, man, can we have a blowout one of these days so I can kind of kick back and relax? But that ain't gonna happen, right? We just, we have to understand this is, this is this type of team we have and we gotta come mentally ready to play every day or, or it's, it's uh, you know, we're not gonna be there. So, um, you know, has it prepared us? I mean, time will tell, you know, I, I think, I think it, we couldn't have done any more to prepare ourselves for this. I mean, now it's just a matter of executing and figuring out ways to get it done when it counts. So, uh, you know, we've got New Mexico this week and then uh, the Cats down south. So, um, you know, it, the schedule doesn't get a whole lot easier. Like it just it continues to remain tough and it's going to be, um, you know, we have no easy games. You go to Pullman after that and, and that's a tough place to play. Um, couple of midweek games mixed in there that are going to be a challenge so yeah I don't see this getting any easier we just have to play better any anticipation of your starting pitcher against New Mexico on Tuesday <laughs> no I gotta <laughs> I gotta see who's who's left standing after this weekend and, and see who we're gonna go with on Tuesday if Markle's back ready to go maybe he gets a couple innings we'll see I'm not sure we got to go evaluate where we're at health wise and, and who's available for Tuesday you mentioned in the past the fourth ends up winning here at Muni. Um, and Harris in particular, you mentioned sort of the sting of, of not taking care of business, especially in some of the closer games this weekend. Um, how do you, uh, from maybe a motivational standpoint, leverage uh, this kind of series moving forward? Um, you know, I, I've spoken all I can to these guys and I, I don't want to be one of those coaches that just continues to sit up there and have it go in, in one ear out the other. I don't think that's the case in there right now, but you know, there's a fine line between sitting up there on your on your soapbox and listening to yourself talk versus just punching them between the eyes of truth and hopefully they are able to motivate themselves at some point in time. Um, again, I think it's a it's a good group in there and they'll, they'll my hope is they'll figure it out. Um, but, but again, that can't come from me preaching to them every day. They gotta at some point look in the mirror and, and be a little self-motivated too. Is that sort of, when, when you're here as a player, is that the kind of camaraderie, the, the expectations that, that you felt in day to day in the clubhouse? Well, I, mean, I think there was a, there was a little fear that, that if you didn't show up ready to play that, that you know, you just might get your fanny kicked by a teammate, right? And maybe those days are gone, I don't know. But I do know there was an edge that you better show up ready to play or, or you might have a teammate grab you by the throat and throw you down the tunnel. And, you know, some might say, well, that's hard to mean in today's world. Well, <laughs> that, was, that was a fun time to play. Um, but uh, anyhow, I, I'm, not, I'm not suggesting we need to have a bunch of fighters in there, but uh, we do have to have guys that hold each other accountable and set an expectation that we got to be better than this. With Kevin Karstetter, he, I think it was started the first 12 of 13 games, uh, hasn't played in the last couple. Uh, how do you put in perspective his role if, if that's sort of, if you foresee that uh, potentially changing um, you know, for, for the foreseeable future? Uh, Kevin needed a mental reset. Okay. You know, at the end of the day, uh, he's a good player, um, but it, it, some, some token you, you as a coach understand the game is really speeding up on him at times. Um, you know, I think it started a little bit down in Texas and, you know, continued uh, on Friday night. And it's like, man, he needs, he needs a breather. He needs a mental reset. Um, and, you know, you can't, you got to give some of these other guys the opportunity as well. Mario's a, a four-year starter, you know, coming from, from USF and, you know, he's a good player. Um, hasn't gotten off offensively like, he, like he's capable of yet, but, you know, that's, that's the luxury of, I guess, having a little bit of depth is, is with somebody scuffling like that, the game is speeding up. We, we got to give another guy a shot. Um, you know, there's, there's some good players that haven't played a whole lot. You know, Trey Newman hasn't played a whole lot. Josiah Cromick hasn't played a lot. Eamon Lance hasn't played a lot. But, you know, I kind of try to keep stressing these guys. There are opportunities coming. 
So be ready for it. These these guys that I'm running out there every day better start figuring it out because if we're not going to win with them, then we got to try somebody new, right? So uh, Kevin's no different. If, if we're not getting it done, then the next guy's going to get an opportunity. Thanks, Thank you, Willie.